hello beautiful people out there <laughs> it's so good to be back here and it's your girl Claire and I remain your girl Claire um, yes yesterday I uploaded a video and I said that I was going to you know air my view about you know the trending issue at the moment in Nigeria for most of my subscribers who don't know where I'm from I'm a ninja girl <laughs> So this is a ninja girl, you know, <laughs> talking to you direct in life, okay, life and direct. So, um, there's um, an issue, actually an allegation against a pastor in Nigeria, you know, that is trending at the moment. So, um, it's all over the news and um, normally <laughs> I, I don't involve myself in such issues, you know, so many issues you know that don't concern me but as long as i am here on youtube and i'm a christian you know and i'm a christian youtuber so i'm not just a christian youtuber i am a minister of the word of god so i believe that if we don't say something about such issues then um who else will do that so I decided to come up yesterday I uploaded the video because I just wanted to see your reaction towards the video I just wanted people to watch the video and though that was not a full interview so actually it's all about um, a particular pastor called Biodun Fatou Yibo um, he's the founder and the senior pastor of the Koza church you know the commonwealth of zion church in nigeria and um there was an allegation that was made against him by a beautiful lady called um busola dakolo busola dakolo is married to um one of the popular musicians in nigeria timmy dakolo so um you know before i saw this trending news you know i don't know what happened but a picture of her just popped up on Google, you know, because as a YouTuber, sometimes we, we, we research and we go into Google to do one of those things. And I saw this beautiful lady and I was like, oh, who is she? Before, no, I didn't even know her. I didn't even know about the news, you know, that was trending. But I think that was like two weeks ago and I saw her picture and I was like, oh, you know, who is this beautiful lady? So I started, um, you know researching and i got to know that she's married to a particular musician called um timmy dakolo and there was a particular uh, music you know uh vi music video that her husband did that is all about um you know a man's expression of love for his wife you know so and i watched the video i, I think it's the vow something the vow so i watched the video and i liked the video because it's all about um the vows you know that a man and a woman takes you know um there at the altar i think it's all about the vows and all that so um not to waste your time people <laughs> i am actually out here today because i am someone who always speaks out i tell you i am someone who is bold about speaking out and i don't care if anyone likes it or not as long as i impress god and I always tell people too, as long as you are living your life to impress God, it's not about men, it's not about anyone, it's about God, God's validation of you. Because I believe that you can pretend, you know, where people are, but before the eyes of God, who are you? Because God sees what is done in the secret. So you can just um, try to please men and then, you know, displease god and at the same time you can't hide whatever you do from god because god is omnipotent and he's omnipresence and he's the one that sees and searches the heart of everyone so i am out here today to air my view like i said like i promised so i am out here beautiful people for those of you who are not um africans my german subscribers um my brazilian subscribers subscribers all over the world you know who don't understand the whole issue that's what i'm trying to you know first of all talk about it it's all about an allegation that was made against um, a particular pastor and it's actually something that happened several decades ago because i don't know exactly how old she is now but 
it's an allegation that she has made against the pastor, you know, that he violated her, you know, when she was a teenager. And um, before I, you know, I am not taking sides with anyone because one, I was not there when it happened. Like I said in my previous video, I wrote something there. Only God knows what happened between these two. Only God knows what transpired between the two of them. If it was, you know, an abuse or not. If it was a relationship or whatever, only God can say and only God can judge. But we, as humans, you know, we are quick to judge people. We are quick to, you know, um, you know, say negative things about people when we hear such things. So I am not trying to condone evil here and I am not trying to stand on the side of evil. Like I'm a truthful person and I fear God. So whatever I'm going to say here, I am also going to use the word of God because I want us to understand that um, it's not just about this man, I mean, Bjorn being a pastor, um, before you become a pastor, you are first a human, you are first a man, you are first um, an individual because, before God calls you and before God starts using you. So it's not about him being a pastor, you know. So it's all about we as humans, you know. So because there's nowhere in the word of God that says um, if you are a pastor and you commit sin and you die, you, you go to that part of hell that is hotter, you know, than some other parts, you know, for example, I am using that as an example. There's no place where it's said in the scriptures that when someone who is a pastor, you know, does something evil and that person um, ends up not entering, entering into the kingdom of God or goes to hell, for example, because people might be thinking, oh, a pastor might end up not going to hell. It's possible if the pastor is living in sin. And he's not ready to change his or her ways and he's not ready to learn. Yeah, there is a probability of that person, not just a pastor, as long as you are a Christian or whoever, you know. There's a probability, as long as you are not ready to change your ways, there's a probability of you ending up in hell. And there's no way we're in the scripture that says because that person is a man of God or a woman of God, he or she is going to, when that person goes to hell, you know, he or she will be, uh, there is a place for people who are pastors, there's a place for people who are men or women of God. No, hell is hell. Likewise in heaven. There's nothing like, oh, because he's a pastor, so because of that, he has a particular... In heaven or in hell, there's nothing like pastor. There's nothing like man of God or woman of God. It's all about, you know, how you lived your life here on earth. So it's not about who you are, you know. So um, we should also realize as human beings that um, we also have our own flaws, you know. That's what I'm trying to say. I am not talking about them right now i will first of all talk to us and then i will talk about them we also have our flaws i believe that there are people who also do things that are not in line with the word of god and not just because this person is a pastor or he is a man of god or she is um, a prominent person or a popular person you know uh, because of that everybody has the right to to judge them or to you know say negative things against them no you know you also have to think about you you know there are things you do also that are not in line with the word of god and as long as you are doing that thing that's not in line with the word of god you are also committing sin and sin is sin whether the sin of abuse or violation whether the sin of gossiping whether, whether the sin of envy, whether the sin of causing strife, turning people against each other, whether the sin of of, of uh, uh, jealousy, whether the, the, the um, sin of hatred, whatever sin it is, you know, that you are committing, you are in the same category with that person that you are judging. You know, the Bible says something, it says, take off the log in your own eyes, you know, before you remove the one in your brother or your sister's eyes, because it's possible your own is even... Mm, bigger than the one <laughs> bigger than the one that that other person has in his or her eyes you know so i'm trying to say because we 
as humans, we are very fast and quick to judge people. So, but God is not like us. And at the same time, I am not trying to say that what is he has done is right, you know, or if he did it, you know, because it's an allegation not yet proven in the court of, of justice. And the truth remains that as long as there's no evidence, you can't just say, okay, he did it. Except the man himself comes out to say, yes, I did it. And I am yeah, sorry, you know. So as long as the man has not said anything, that someone is silent also about something does not mean that that person is guilty. So, but if truly he did it, then he is accountable to God. Because you can't say you are a pastor and you are violating young girls. You can't say you are a pastor even if you are not a pastor, because it's not about a pastor now, it's not about a, a man of God, a woman of God. Whoever you are, think of it. There are people out there, I mean young girls, who are not um, famous, who are not popular like Busola, who don't even have a husband who is popular like Timi Dakolo, who don't have anyone to stand up for them who have gone through abuse, who have gone through so many things in life, and there was no one to speak out for them. So let's not, let's not be partial, you know, um, in this case, you know. Don't, don't try to do it just because she's popular. Don't do it because she's a prominent person. Let us consider the human aspect of every one of them. And at the same time, let us judge based on the truth. Let us be truthful people. There are house helps, for example, in Africa who have been violated by their masters and they came out and they spoke. There are small girls, you know, who have been violated by, by, by men out there who came out and they said something and nobody fought for them. Nobody came out to say anything about it. So let it not just be about Busola Dakolo, or because he's a prominent pastor too, because we are talking about two prominent people, two popular people. So let it be all about standing up for the truth and judging with wisdom. For example, when, when um, King Solomon, God, you know, asked him to choose, you know, what he wanted because he impressed God and you know, God asked him to choose, uh, ask for, I mean, ask for whatever he wanted from him. Solomon says something, wisdom to be the spirit to discern between good and bad, and the spirit to be able to judge rightly. If not, he wouldn't have been able, because that woman whose child died must have displayed a show, must have cried her eyes out, must have, you know, pretended as if it was the other woman who was wrong. But thank God for the spirit of discernment. Solomon was able to discern who was the real mother of the child. Why am I saying this? You know, this thing happened a very long time ago. And this is where I'm going to talk to my beloved sister, Bus Busola Dakolo. You're a beautiful woman. You are intelligent. And I have, you know, watched some of your videos where you are impacting people. And I love women who are intelligent. I love women who are doing something with their lives, aspiring other women. I love you with a passion, my sister, because you are so beautiful and gracious. I can see that you were gracious. But the issue here is that this thing happened a very long time ago. And you were a teenager. And if only you had spoken out or the people around you who ended up knowing about this thing, if they have if they had spoken out, I believe this man then would have been called to order. And, you know, I believe he, he, he would have stopped because if he doesn't stop, then the law would have caught up with him by now. So um, that's the mistake you made. You know, you would have spoken out. Because you said something, you said you were a very bold person. And you said even in the meeting, because I watched your interview, you said even in that gathering, the day you were, the first time you attended this gathering, because you didn't want to be there, you said you were there because of your sisters. And you said when the first time as we asked, you know, to stand up and all that, that you said something, you said you didn't want to be in such a gathering. So I believe that same boldness would have prompted you, no matter who, how the devil tried to put fear into you, you know, according to her, she said what she was saying at that time was, you know, 
a court is because he was formerly in court. But that was not the issue. The issue is that someone came into your own house because this is your house and I cannot imagine someone entering my own house to try to violate my kid. And it also depends on how you have brought up your kids. Because if as parents, you know, we need to come to that point in our lives where we relate with our children as our friends. Be friends, first of all, with your child. Because if you are friends with your child, that child will tell you every little thing that happens in his or her life. My girl tells me everything that happens. When she's in school, after school, on the road, anywhere, she tells me everything. She, she doesn't hide anything from me. I trained her up that way. When my girl was in, in kindergarten, you know, she was still little. Something happened then in the kindergarten. A little boy tried to touch her in a way, you know, that wasn't pleasant. She came back home and she reported to me. She, she, asked, she was angry and she told me, mom, this is what someone tried to do, you know. And I went to the kindergarten. I was mad. I was angry. I was pissed off. I was like, how can this be? How come you people were there? And such? they said, oh, please, madam, we are sorry, you know. I was like, then if that is how it is, then you people should try as much to monitor the kids when they go into that particular session, you know, into that particular section. Because they said there's a section, you know, when they are tired, they want to lie down. So they all go, kids like four, five, six, they go into that place and they, they, they lay their heads down or just rest or, you know, chill there. So this little boy tried to, you know, touch her in a way that wasn't pleasant. And my girl at that age, I think she was just three. She came back home and she told me and I was mad. I was like, how dare you? I don't even allow my... Uh, it's not everything I will say here. My girl doesn't watch videos that are not right. No, never. It depends on the upbringing you give your child or your children. So I went to the school. I made sure I had to clear this issue. I, I reported the child to the parents because... Um, the child is not African, you know. So I reported the child and I said, let this be the first and the last time my girl comes back home and tells me such a thing because I am not going to take it lightly. And that was it. It never to today happened again. So if you, first of all, you know, build up this relationship with your child or your children where they can confide in you and tell you everything then you'll be able to know as a parent you know what's going on in their life so I, I think like Bukola said you know she didn't have a father figure but what about her mom she made a mistake and even when the the the, the incidents happened according to her she said you know blood dropped and all that we all know what that means she should have used that as an evidence Use whatever you use to clean it up because she said she cleaned it up. You would have used that thing you used to clean it up. Show it to your sister. Open up to your sister. Even if you, you, you didn't open up to your mom. Open up. In fact, she should have even screamed. According to her, he covered her mouth. He covered your mouth. Then what happened as he was leaving? You would have also screamed. You would have also shouted. Or even after the deed was done. Because if she was able to say it out the first time, it wouldn't have happened repeatedly. So that's where now I am like, I hope it wasn't an affair going on at the end of the day. So, I mean, if a friend of mine, you know, honey, I'm not trying to, you know, say something, you know, negative here about our discussion somehow on social media yesterday. But I am just trying to use this as an example for my viewers because my friend might be listening to this video right now. You know, we talked about this issue somehow um, early hours of this morning on social media. And, you know, we, we shared views on the issue. And I told my friend, she's also a Christian sister. And I told her, I said, she was like, uh, because of the stigma, that's why she, because of, you know, the mentality, African mentality and the stigma thing. Whether it was then or now, the stigma will still be there because there are people who will still say, oh, Timmy Dakolo's wife was violated. There are still people who will look at her with her eyes. So whether then, I mean, it would have even been better then because by now she would have 
been able to have grown the whole situation. I know it's not easy to come out of such a thing, especially, you know, at that tender age. But at least I believe uh, the impact, you know, won't be that bad, you know, or deep as it is right now. So I pray, my beloved sister, if it actually happened, that the Lord will heal you emotionally, psychologically, and mentally. I mean, it shouldn't happen to anyone because I also have a girl. But the truth, my dear, is that you should have spoken up a long time ago, stigma or no stigma. And that is what we as parents should be able to learn as a lesson from this whole thing and stop castigating anyone. Train up your children to be able to stand against anything that is not right train up your children to speak up train up your children to learn to resist evil train up your children especially the girls to be able to say no to anything that is not right train them up in the fear of the lord because a child that has the fear of the lord there are some things that that child will never want to be involved in and even if that thing you know is trying to you know, happen around her. You will see her, she will be repulsive. That's the truth. That child will be repulsive. So, I mean, that's my own view on this. So, we Africans, we are very quick to judge, you know, without hearing both sides. This man has not said anything up till now. It's possible he did it and maybe he's just like, okay, let it be. Then now, I, to Pastor uh, Bjordan, if truly you did it, sir, it's really a terrible thing because, okay, you fell into temptation. According to you, you said it was the devil's work. According to her interview, she said he apologized later on to her family, as in her family, not her mom, just her siblings, you know, who came out to confront him about the whole thing when they finally learned about it. I mean, you asked for forgiveness. I hope it stopped there because if you know you have a weakness, I mean, you, that you're a pastor does not mean you don't have a weakness. There are, everyone has a weakness. There are people who talk too much. It's a weakness. There are people who gossip about other people wrongly, who say things about people that is not right. There are people who cause crime. There are people who are envious and jealous and, you know, go about doing terrible things with their mouth. That is also a sin. So whether it's the sin of violation or the sin of gossiping or the sin of hating on someone or the sin of causing strife, putting two people's heads together, whether it's the sin of uh, um, rumor mongering, whether it's the sin of according to the word of God. I mean, sin is sin. Let us not start saying it now. Oh, because he's a pastor, he's sin. What about you? Have you checked yourself? Are you, you know, sinless? Are you sinless? I am not trying to support anybody, like I said. But I am trying to make us to understand that all the people who are here busy, you know, throwing stones at him or throwing stones at her, check your own life. Are you perfect? Who is perfect? A pastor is not God and is not perfect. Before that man or woman became a woman of God, a man of God, he or she is first a human being. And in heaven, God is not going to judge him or her. Oh, based on you were a bishop or you were a pope or you were a clergy or whatever you, or you were a president. Or, the Bible says the word of God will judge us all. So everybody will face judgment. It doesn't matter who you are. And sin is sin. There's no way in the Bible where there are different kinds of categories of sin, you know. So, and okay, this sin is higher than this one. This sin is, you know, lower than this one. Sin is sin. So, check your own self first. You understand me? So, and let's just keep praying for these two people. That's my own view. Rather than castigate any of them, rather than, you know, take sides with anyone, pray for them. If this thing truly happened, let this man apologize to her who had early. Even though she said he had already apologized them, but it kept happening, you know. Let her, let us pray that she gets healed. Let us also pray that the man will be able to overcome his weakness. Because if he's, you know, still busy doing this, you know, because I am hearing now that some other, some other woman came up. Why is this one not coming up? Is it because, um... Busola came up. That's where I don't like fake people. You, you people knew that this thing was happening. Why didn't you all come out? You say stigma, stigma, stigma. Stigma. 
is whether you said it then or not, the stigma is still there. And why is it because one has said another one is now coming out? Why didn't this other person come up to a long time ago? So um I am <laughs> just trying to say my mind here and um I'll still come back to the issue, but I will just quickly read from the scriptures. Let's see what the scripture says in Galatians 5. I will be reading from 19. It says, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness. Um, what else? Let's see. It says, Idolatry, sorcery, mm -hmm. hatred, contentions, jealousies. Outburst of words, anger, selfish ambitions, selfish ambitions, dissensions and heresies, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, and all that. Then 21 says, envy. If you are an envious person, you are living in sin. So if you are pointing your finger towards someone who violated someone, what about you? Are you an envious person? This is what the word of God says. It says, envy, murders. Drunkenness. Are you a drunk? Are you someone who, who drinks alcohol and, you know, you, you are always drunk? You know, get drunk, intoxicated by the power of alcohol. Then it says, reveries and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not, what? Inherit the kingdom of God. It didn't say the pastors will not inherit the kingdom of God. It didn't say that woman of God, that man of God only will not inherit the kingdom of God. He says, whoever practices such things, Galatians chapter 5 from verse 19. Please, if you have a Bible, go through it. He says, if you belong to this group, jealousy, envy, murder. You, murder is not only when you take a knife and you kill someone. You can kill with your mouth. Um, then it says that those who practice such things will not do what will not inherit the kingdom of God. So it doesn't matter. Sin is sin. Let us not, you know, because I am seeing a whole lot of things on the internet, you know, people just say, ah, pastor, pastor. Think about you. What happens tomorrow if God calls you and says, do my work? And along the line, you shut you fall short of the glory of God. People will also throw the same stones at you because you once threw those stones to someone. So what am I trying to say? I am, like I said, I am not trying to stand on the side of anybody, not because he's a pastor, not because um, she is a popular figure. No, I am saying the truth and nothing but the truth based on the word of God. Such yourself. Are you free of sin? You who is... Picking up the stone to throw at him or throw at her. Check your own life. A woman, you know, committed adultery in the scriptures. And all the people, you know, took up stones. The men, they took up stones. They wanted to stone her to death because they said it's the law. And she ran to Jesus. What did Jesus say to them? Let him who has no sin be the first to do what? Cast the first stone. So, Please, I know that is a terrible thing, if truly it happened. I mean, I don't condone evil. And I stand, I've even done a video, you know, anything abuse, I don't tolerate it and I don't stand on the side of anything evil. But I am trying to be say, let us, this case is very delicate. It's very delicate. She actually made her mistake herself because if she had said it a long time ago, I mean, this man, I believe, would have been reprimanded, you know, and I mean, maybe by now he would have changed his ways because he would have been disgraced then a long time ago. So, and now different people are coming up just because one prominent person came up. Like I said before, what about those little ones there, those poor people out there who have no one to stand up for them, who do not have a voice, who do not have anybody to speak up for them, who have even come out, it happened immediately and they spoke out that they were violated, who went on a rally, who demonstrated on their behalf. Let us all have the heart of God, let us have that, that heart of children of the Most High God. Not because it is someone who is prominent or, you know, we are all humans. Whether the person is prominent, whether the person comes from a poor home or everybody 
has the right to live a good life, a free life. And I mean, no one should violate anyone's rights. No. That's why I said teach your children to stand up for their rights. Stigma or no stigma. Let that child speak up. This is what happened to me. This is what he did to me. And by so doing, you know, we will have a, 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 a society, you know, and if everyone can come out like this and speak up for those people who came out immediately it happened and said, this is what happened to me. Stigma or no stigma? If everyone will come out and, you know, fight on their behalf, then the world will be a better place. But there's no need for the fighting and there's no need for, you know, trying to make it. I know it's terrible, it's painful. I know if truly he did this because I keep saying if truly he did it because... I am not a witness. I was not there. I don't know what happened between them. Only one person, I tell you, only one person saw everything that happened that day and thereafter. Only one person. And that is God, whom we are all accountable to. He's the one that saw what transpired between the two of them. So I just want us to learn, you know, to not to condemn people, you know, judge people just because we feel, oh, you know, yeah, because they are pastors. After all, there are people who encourage pastors to do evil. There are women who call them up, you know, to, to try to lure them into sin. There are men who call up women of God who try to tempt them, you know, to just bring them down. There are so many things. So we should also look at it from this angle. There are still people, women, who, because they feel, oh, this pastor is rich, you know, he's a prominent person. They end up, you know, putting themselves, you know, out there, shipping themselves just because, you know, they just want to get that pastor to do what is not right in the eyes of God. So, I mean, it's a horrible thing, you know, and hearing this happening in the kingdom of in the kingdom and amongst us Christians, you know, is a terrible thing and it's not something that, you know, is worth hearing. So, and it's not just about us, it's happening even, I mean, among non-Christians. Let us count on whether the person is a Christian, whether the person is not, whether it has nothing to do with religion. Violation is a sin. Violation is something terrible. Let us be able to stand up for everyone who has gone through this incident, not just for those who are saying it right now so that's my view you know i pray that the lord will touch both of them heal my sister busola i mean she's a gracious woman i can see that and um pastor biodun i pray that the lord god almighty who called you who knows your weakness who knows that you know if truly you did that will have mercy on your soul and i pray that through this lesson you will be chastised and that you will know that you can overcome any form of temptation. God bless you people. But don't forget, train up a child in the way that he or she should go. And when that child is grown, that child will never depart from you. My father taught me the right way. And that is why I am who I am today. I do not do things anyhow. I do not live my life anyhow. I am not trying to be proud here but that's the truth there are things i i mean before i even do it i am scared i am like oh god if i do this i mean god is seeing me even if no other person is seeing me so because of that i don't do some certain things and because i know the word of god is there to judge us whether in the secret place or in the public place so please people this is not just about a pastor this is not just about a man of god this is about two humans two individuals so let's leave that issue of pastor or no or pastor out of it let's judge this matter you know based on two individuals who have an issue right now and one was you know violated and there is an allegation against the other one if it is the truth i pray that god will handle the matter himself and let other people learn from it and for those pastors out there who living their lives anyhow disgracing the kingdom of god okay now hmm. sin lies at your door you might be doing what you're doing and you think no one is seeing you but there is god up there don't forget to god sees it all god bless every one of you and i love you and we will see you again so please check yourself check your motive
Someday we will all stand before the Almighty God. And when we start seeing such things happening, I want us to know that the end time is here. I've said it before. Jesus is coming back again. Are you prepared? God bless you. I love you. See you in my next video. Stay happy and stay blessed. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.